The Lidamad was a drug made in Germany in the late 1950s, initially used to treat anxiety, gastrits, and insomnia. It was marketed as a safe sleeping pill and therefore used by pregnant women to relieve morning sickness. However, once the thalidomide capsule was digested, the pregnant woman would be provided with both estalidomide and arthalidomide. Both the left and right versions are mirror images of each other. The arthalidomide was sleep-inducing, whereas the estalidomide was a teratogen, which translates to monster-making in Greek as it would cause babies to form severe disabilities and limb deformities. The left and right versions of thalidomide are optical isomers. This is a type of stereoisomerism. A chiral carbon atom is one that has four different groups attached to it, as seen here in bromochlorofluoroidomethane. It's possible to arrange the groups in two different ways around the carbon atom, so that two different molecules are made. These molecules are called enanomers or optical isomers. The enanomers are mirror images and no matter which way you turn them, they can't be superimposed. Both the enanomers share the same chemical and physical properties, except for how they behave with light. Optical isomers rotate plane polarized light, and plane polarized light is simply just light that only vibrates in one direction. To demonstrate this, I created a model that helps me visualize the process. The beam of light is composed of electromagnetic waves that vibrate in all possible directions. Certain materials, such as plastic polaroid film, have the property of absorbing all the waves except one that vibrates in a particular plane. Once it hits the sample containing thalidomide, the chiral compounds interact with the plane polarized light by rotating its vibration plane to the left or right. One enantiomer rotates in the clockwise direction, whereas the other rotates in the anti-clockwise direction. Dextrororatory enantiomers rotate clockwise, whereas levoratory rotate anti-clockwise. Racemic mixtures contain equal quantities of each enantiomer of an optically active compound. So if there are two enantiomers, why can't we just extract the desired enantiomer? In thalidomide's case, the sleep-inducing enantiomer. Even if we were to purify the racemic mixture, of thalidomide, it would be useless because the R version metabolizes in the body and produces the S version. However, this isn't the case for all stereo-optical molecules, as ibuprofen's S form, which is needed, metabolizes to R. However, the S form is active, whereas the R form is inert, which means it just passes, therefore there is no need for purifying. Since the thalidomide tragedy, rules in testing and licensing drugs have now become tougher and it is now being used to treat leprosy and bone cancer, but it is still heavily regulated.